Hello, this is Dr. Barbara Oswald, and this is your Module 4 Overview for PSS 312 Drugs and Behavior class. So in Module 4, we're going to be talking about the legally restricted drugs in our society, the illegal drugs, including cocaine, the amphetamines, um, heroin, other opiates, uh, marijuana, and hallucinogens. By the end of this module, students should be able to at least describe the acute effects of cocaine in terms of its stimulant properties and its relationship to the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. And we're gonna learn and be able to compare and contrast cocaine's effects with the amphetamines, including um, just dextroamphetamine like Adderall, uh, as well as methamphetamine. Uh, and we will discuss this in discussion option one and homework question one. Next, students uh, should be able to discuss a possible explanation for why stimulant drugs like Ritalin or Adderall would be effective as a treatment for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD. We'll discuss this in our discussion option two, and you'll um, be assessed on your knowledge of this in homework question two. Next, you will learn to describe the principal acute effects of heroin on the mind and the body. We'll talk about this in discussion options three and four in homework question three. Next, you'll learn um, to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of methadone maintenance as a treatment option for heroin abuse. Uh, and you'll also learn to explain how buprenorphine treatment is different from traditional maintenance programs. We'll discuss this in uh, homework question four and uh, examine this as well through our module four exam questions. Uh, you will also learn to describe the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of marijuana, and that will be assessed in homework question five. Uh, we'll discuss issues surrounding the gateway hypothesis um, with respect to marijuana, and we'll discuss this in discussion options five and six and homework question six. And then we will uh, compare and contrast the physiological and behavioral effects of three major categories of hallucinogens that are related to particular neurotransmitters in the brain. We'll talk about this in discussion option seven and homework question seven. So what exactly do you have to do for module four? Well, in this module, we read four chapters in the textbook. I know it sounds like a lot, but they're actually pretty short chapters. Um, we'll read chapter six on cocaine and other stimulants. We'll read chapter 10 on the opiates, chapter 11 on marijuana, and chapter 12 on other hallucinogens. Um, then you'll read the module four research article. This article is actually examining the effectiveness of methadone maintenance therapy in incarcerated individuals who may be addicted to heroin. We know that it's a huge problem. Um, the overdose that's experienced both by people who are incarcerated and then after they get released from prison, af after they've experienced withdrawal and their tolerance is much lower. So it's a huge problem um, of heroin addiction, especially for people who are in our criminal justice system. And so we'll examine that further through our module four research article and the exam. Um, as with other modules, you'll have practice quizzes available over each of the chapters that we cover. Then you'll get to participate in the Module 4 discussion. You'll complete the Module 4 homework questions, and you'll complete the Module 4 exam questions. So what exactly are we going to be covering in all of these chapters or in this uh, module overall? What drugs? Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, but if I went too quickly, now we can see it in print. We're going to talk about the stimulants cocaine, amphetamine, including dextroamphetamine or Adderall. We'll talk about Ritalin as well and compare and contrast that to Adderall. And we'll talk about methamphetamine because methamphetamine is making a huge comeback in our society today. Uh, we also talk about bath salts, which we haven't really heard too much about in the last year or two, but they're still around. Um, next in chapter 10, we'll talk about all the opiates, including heroin, as well as opiate painkillers or pills. Um, we'll mention Kratom here, but we'll also talk more about Kratom in chapter 13 when we look at um, uh, legal uh, over-the-counter drugs. Kratom is a, an herbal supplement that is being shown to be as addictive as other opiates. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about Kratom in this class. Next in chapter 11, we'll examine marijuana. 
We'll talk about the uses of marijuana, the abuse potential for marijuana, the therapeutic effects of marijuana, and we want to really explore what we started talking about back in Module 1 about the schedule control of marijuana. You know, federally, marijuana is a Schedule 1 drug, meaning it is uh, it carries the highest legal penalty, penalty for possession. Um, and that's very confusing given that many states now have approved marijuana for at least medicinal use, and many other states have approved marijuana for recreational use. Uh, we see in the state of Ohio, I know things have been sort of on hold for the last, you know, six months or year or so due to other concerns, but um, making marijuana legal as a recreational drug in Ohio has been, um, you know, on our legislature's um, minds. So we will explore that. And then finally, we'll finish the module by talking about a variety of hallucinogens, including LSD, MDMA or ecstasy or molly, uh, ketamine, and salvia, along with some other ones. So chapter six, when we start talking about the stimulants, what exactly are we going to talk about in that chapter? Well, we'll talk about the history of cocaine and its early use worldwide. Uh, we'll talk about the rise of the amphetamines beginning in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, we'll talk about the cocaine epidemics of, um, you know, the, the 60s and the 80s um, and the resurgence of cocaine today. We'll talk about the return of methamphetamine today. As I mentioned earlier, we'll talk about bath salts. What are they um, and what are the risks of those? And then we'll talk about the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of these drugs so we understand how they affect us physically uh, and behaviorally and psychologically. We'll talk about the acute and chronic effects of these drugs, and we'll address the use of stimulant drugs to treat ADHD. I've mentioned in some other places in the course a particular research interest of mine is understanding um, the abuse of prescription stimulants. I know that they are widely abused. They're abused primarily by high school and college students. They're frequently mixed with alcohol um, because they're really readily available on college campuses. And so um, uh, our uh, research article that we talked about in the last module actually looked at alcohol mixed with with um, energy drinks or, you know, stimulant drugs, but we'll, so we'll talk about that in this chapter. Next, in chapter 10, we'll talk about the opiates. We'll look at the history of the opiates, where opiates come from. You know, a lot of you are familiar with the original opiates are derived from opium, which can be harvested from the poppy plant. We'll talk about where heroin came from. It's a completely synthetic opiate developed in the early 1900s. Um, We'll talk about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of all the opiates, what they share in common, why opiates are so addictive, including pain pills that people are prescribed. We'll talk about the, me the medical use of opiate drugs. Um, we'll talk about acute chronic effects of opiates. As I mentioned, we'll just crowd them a little bit in this chapter, but um, also more in chapter 13. And then we'll investigate further some treatment options for opiate addiction in chapter 15. Although our um, research article for this module is actually looking at methadone maintenance therapy as a treatment option. And so we will talk about methadone maintenance and buprenorphine and some of the um, opiate-assisted um, medical treatments for opiate addiction. In chapter 11, we'll talk about marijuana. We'll talk about the history of cannabis use, prevalence rates of cannabis use, potency issues with different strains of cannabis and marijuana. Uh, we'll talk about methods of use, right? Smoking versus uh, eating consumables versus um, maybe some other ways that marijuana might be taken. I'm not familiar with any, but you never know what kids these days might do. Uh, we will talk about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of marijuana, medical uses for marijuana, the physiological and psychological effects of marijuana. We'll investigate the potential for marijuana as a gateway drug. Honestly, I'll tell you up front, very little research suggests that it's true. If anything, alcohol and nicotine are much more prevalent in terms of gateway drugs. If the idea of a gateway drug is a drug that somebody might start taking when they're younger that would lead them to start trying let's say harder drugs that could be much more addictive but um anyway we will talk about that in this module and then we will address some issues around legalization of marijuana pros and cons finally in this module we'll talk about hallucinogenic drugs 
we'll actually talk about three classes of hallucinogenic drugs, those that work through the serotonin system in the brain. Examples of these include LSD, mescaline, and peyote. We'll also talk about the methylated amphetamines. An example of this is MDMA or ecstasy or molly. In my world, I actually classify MDMA as a stimulant because as you can see in the name, amphetamine is in the name. MDMA stands for methylene dioxy methamphetamine, uh, but your book sticks it over here in the hallucinogens, so we'll talk about it here in the hallucinogens. Then there's some anticholinergic hallucinogens, which some people are familiar with, like belladonna and atropine. Um, we'll talk about the pharmacology of, and pharmacokinetics of hallucinogens. We'll talk about the acute effects and toxicity of them. We'll also talk about other types of hallucinogens, including things like DMT and the dissociative anesthetics like PCP or angel dust and ketamine or special K. And uh, the book actually also addresses salvarin A or salvia, which some people like to take. So that is our quick overview of what we're going to cover in Module 4. If you have any questions, as always, please email me.